Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Saturdays with Steph. I'm really excited to see all of you and to work on block five this week. I've got all of my blocks on the wall behind me, as you can see. And the one that we're working on this week is the Wyoming star right up here behind me. Yay! I'm very excited to do this. So I just want to say a quick hello to everybody who's here. My screen is way over there and I can't really see it very well. So if I miss you, I'm so sorry. But um, I see Mary and she said she has a migraine. I'm so sorry to hear about that. Those are horrible. I get them every now and then and I can't do anything but lay down. So I hope you feel better soon. Linda Parsons is here. Mary B is here. Um, Del Marie is here. Hello, Angela's here. Hi, Angela. Ooh, what's your cross stitching? Um, let me see. Shannon Rhodes is here. Hey there. Cheryl Curley's here. Pamela Hannah's here. Donna Bogart is here. Teresa Louise is here. Hey, good to see you. Um, let's see. Margie Neal is here. Philippa is here from Australia. Welcome, welcome. Good to see you all. So um, I tried a little something new this week. I hooked up the bot that everybody uses to help moderate and for you to be able to go ahead and put commands in to find things. So I'm going to try it out this live. And if it works, then um, I'll incorporate it for every other live. So um, if you're looking for the patterns today, I put the link at the very top of the chat. It's in the little blue box at the top, or you can hit exclamation stars and you should be able to get the pattern. Um, so trying to use technology a little bit, but I'm not very good with it. So we'll see how this goes. <laughs> hi, Patty, good to see you. Uh, hi, Christine. Hi, Carrie. Hello, everybody. Good to see you. Uh, let's see, Tracy Albert is here. Susan's here. Oh my gosh, so many people. Hi, Peggy, good to see you. Hi, Gwenny. Okay, so I hope you all had a good week. I had a good week, just very um, busy. Um, I had a lot of things going on. Um, hi, Sherry. Good to see you. Hi, Diane. Good to see you. Um, I was working on the Stargazer quilt for this Stephen and Stephanie so long, um, working on the Fort Worth Fabric Studio quilt. And then yesterday, I taught my first class for online class for So Yeah, and that was a lot of fun. We made these triangular pillows. So I had a great time with that. And um, most of the ladies, I think, seemed to have a good time. And a lot of them finished their pillows. So that was really, really cool. Um, let's see. Math Geek is here. Hello. Hey, Sherlock Sows. How are you? Um, and then uh, they asked me to do another class. So I know I've done this on my channel before, and a lot of you have um, sewn these with me, but if you're interested in sewing it with me again, or if you haven't done it and you're interested, um, I'm gonna sew these mini charm bags on with Soya's peeps next month. And it'll be a class that they're offering. It'll be a free class because the pattern's free. So if you're interested in that at all, if you'd like to take that class with me, it'll be on their website when they announce their March classes, which they haven't done yet, but. I'm just really excited that they asked me to come back and do another class. So that'll be fun. Uh, Kathleen's here. Seely's here. Awesome. Joy's here. Oh, good to see you. Oh, you guys are all talking to each other. That's awesome. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get this week's block started. A few people said um, it looks like it was hard, but I promise it's not. It's a lot of pieces, but it's not hard. So. We'll go ahead and get going. Hey, Dorlin, good to see you. Is that a recorded video for the bags? Mm, they will record it. Um, I did it on a live quite a while ago. I want to say almost a year ago, last spring or so. So if you're interested, you can go back and find that or come on to the class in March. So hey, Terry. Hi, how are you? Hi, Doreen. Good to see everybody. All right. So I'm going to turn my camera on. So you guys can see what I'm doing. There we go. Hopefully you can see that. And we're gonna start the Wyoming star. So this is kind of, um, this star has two names. It's called the antique star or the Wyoming star. So I thought that was kind of neat. And it's a star that you don't see very often. That's why I pulled this one kind of out. So thanks, Tamala. 
The Quilting Compound's here. Hello, hello, Nancy Gus. Hi, Marla. Good to see you guys. Okay. So these are the pieces for the star legs right here. And this is the these are the pieces for the center. So I'm gonna put these aside for now and we're gonna do those corner units. And every um, week so far, what I've had you do is add your accent color to the corner. So this week we're adding the accent color, but there's a twist this week. <laughs> we're adding another one. So this is gonna go on the opposite corner of your accent corner. So we're gonna add these on this corner and these on this corner. So I'm gonna start with those and get our corner units done because that's the easiest piece to do. Uh, Shannon said, read the cutting instructions correctly. Ask me how I know. <laughs> I do stuff like that all the time. I go, this isn't right, this isn't right. And it's my fault because I didn't read something correctly. <laughs> yes, it is a beautiful star, Celie. I think so too. I wanted to mix in some well-known stars, but some also ones that aren't as well-known. And I thought this was one of those pretty stars. And I'm wearing this big old thick sweater because I'm freezing. <laughs> It's not as cold this afternoon as it was this morning, but I went out to the post office this morning and it was 16 degrees with a wind chill of I don't know what, and I was frozen. And I kind of caught that chill and haven't been able to warm up since. So, hey, Shirley, good to see you. So I just added those on that corner and I'm gonna add these squares on the opposite corner. And I'm just gonna add them both before I go ahead and trim and press. I don't need to take extra steps. <laughs> you can trim them all and press them all at the same time. And you're gonna make four of these. Oh, Marla, if you're interested in the Underground Railroad thing, I've got books on it. I've got quilt books on it. I am very fascinated by that. Oh, yeah, you're cold from the ice bear, Tamala. Yeah, it's warmer now, but it was very chilly this morning. Although warmer is all relative, because I was talking to a friend in Texas this morning who said it was cold and it was 57 degrees. And I was like, that's not cold. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm just clipping these edges off and then I'm going to press them. Ouch. And you're going to make four of these corners. Minus two degrees in New York this morning, said Angela. Ooh. Hi, Roxy. Good to have you here. Hi, hey, Shelly. Angela said, I'm stitching a temperature tree. Cool. Felipe said, we're having a heat wave, nasty hot with high humidity. Oof, that's no fun. So don't forget, if you're here and you're part of the Puzzle Mystery Quilt, yay, that starts next weekend. Well, they've already started sending clues out. Mine are not here yet. I think they're supposed to get here Monday. Um, but even if they get here Monday, I'm not going to do anything with them till Saturday because we're going to sew together. I'm really excited about that. Grab my iron, press these guys. Diane said she saw her shipped. 
Shelly said she's waiting for her. She's excited. Yay. I'm very excited about this one. It'll be fun to have everybody to sew with and see everybody's different colorway. Although it seems like a lot of us pick <laughs> the same colorway, which is kind of funny. Okay. So I've got all those corners done. I'm going to put those aside. Oops, that goes to another project. I'm going to put those aside and I'm going to grab the center piece. Hi, Julie. Oh no, yours is stuck in Chicago. Uh, that stinks. Um, Roxy said it's 73 degrees. Nice. I'm making a table runner. I hate putting bindings together on the connection points. Never seem to get it. Yeah, that seems to be a trouble for a lot of people. You're not alone. Uh, Delmarie said, yes, waiting for my package as well. Good thing they're already cut. That's the beauty of the cotton cuts puzzle mystery quilt. <laughs> Shannon said, I haven't gotten my shipping notice yet. I hope it gets here in time. Yeah, I hope so too. If you don't get it by Monday or Tuesday, Shannon, I would say to contact them because I got my shipping notice, I think Thursday. It wasn't yesterday. I want to say it was Thursday. And I saw that they actually moved it yesterday. It originally said it was going to come today, but it's in St. Louis today. So it's not going to be here, <laughs> which is okay. As long as it gets, gets here by next Saturday, I'm good with it. Oh, I guess I should have said what I was doing. <laughs> so I'm taking the center square and I'm adding one of these two and a half inch squares on either side. So I'm going to do both of those, trim them, press them, and then we'll do the opposite sides. We're kind of making a square and a square here. Not kind of, we are. Um, oh, thank you, Patty, for reminding me. Oh, you, uh, you are a mod, Patty. Thank you very much for volunteering. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Oh, Diane, you didn't get a shipping notice. You looked at the website. Okay. Kathleen said, I hope we can join in next weekend. I have plans for earlier in the day and not sure I'll get home in time. I hope you can too, but if you can't, there's always the replay and next month. Hi, Dawn, how you doing? Oh, thanks, Julie. She said she ordered some tape and some other things from my shop today. I appreciate that. Uh, Shelly said mail here where Shannon and I live takes an extra day because it has to go to Spokane first. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so I attach these two pieces on either side. So I'm going to trim these away and press these out and then we'll attach the other two. Yes, Marla, thank you. I just got that yesterday, I think. I think it was yesterday. I don't check the mail every day, to be honest with you. When it's that cold outside, I don't walk my butt down to the mailbox. <laughs> we have a community box that's not right by our house. So when it's that cold, Stephanie doesn't go outside. <laughs> Hi, Melissa, how you doing? Hi, Sherlock Sews. Oh, thank you. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for supporting my shop. If you order today, it will go out on Monday. Okay. All right, I gave that guy a press and now I'm gonna add the squares to the other sides, just like that.
Hey, Nadine, good to see you here. <laughs> Shelly said, I drive to the community box if it's too hot or too cold. Shelly, I tried that one, but my husband's like, why are you driving to the post office box? It's not that far. <laughs> so we'll get through a cold, like in the teens, like it was yesterday and today, this morning. I don't, I just don't go. I just don't get the mail for a couple of days. <laughs> Happy Saturday, Amanda. Good to see you. Oh, thank you, Melissa. Uh, let's see. Delmarie said, we have had to go to the post office to pick up our mail. The mailbox across the street is broken. Oh, no. So the mail person won't deliver on our street at all. Does not make sense to me or to my neighbors. Oh, my goodness. That's not very fun. Especially if you're somebody who works full time. I mean, the post office doesn't have very long hours. Mm. That's not cool. Okay. Uh, let's see. Steely said, really enjoying the Stargazer collab with Steven. It's nice to see the different fabrics everyone used for the same patterns. So inspiring. Yeah, I am loving it. I'm so glad that everybody's sharing their pictures for that because um, depending on what fabrics you picked and what how you arrange them, all the quilts look really, really different. So it's really cool. Speaking of pictures, if you guys are making this um, all-star quilt with me, I would love it if you'd send in your pictures. I did get a few this week. I didn't do a UFO video this week, so there'll be a next week because I sold a lot of stuff this week, but not anything I could show y'all. <laughs> it was stuff that I'm working on for other companies um, that I'm doing some sample sewing and some secret sewing, so I couldn't show you guys. So I didn't have any like personal sewing to show you. So um, this next week I should though. And so if you send me your pictures of your blocks, I would love to include them because I'm loving how they're looking so far from the ones that have sent them to me. So thank you. Haley said, I love to see everyone's quilt coming together and Steph and Steven are such mellow hosts. Yeah, I just, I love spending time with him. He's such a nice guy, so. Okay, so there's the center, the square and the square. So that's done. So I'm going to set that aside. Now, the part that probably everybody thought looked difficult, which it's really not, but it just takes some time and you have to pay attention to kind of what you're doing, is the star legs. So the star legs, you need to make two piles of four. There's going to be a left pile and a right pile. Um, and we're going to make these similar to flying geese, but not exactly the same. So I'm going to start with um, the fabric that goes on the, well, it doesn't matter which one, but the, that goes on the bottom. And I got to grab my pen and a ruler. And then I'll mark these on the back. Or you can use seam guide tape if you have it. But I'm going to mark these just to remind myself which way. I need to be sewing them because we're going to sew these in opposite directions. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to start, like I said, with the ones on this side. So for the ones on the left, I'm going to start sewing from the left down to the bottom right. And then the same with the right. I'm going to start on the right and go down to the bottom left. So we need you need to have um, four of each and they need to be opposites. So that way we can make our star legs.
okay. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you, Marianne. So far, all the stars have completed, said Tracy. My favorite is the Lemoyne star. I love Lemoyne stars. They're so pretty. Okay, so now I'm going to trim these a quarter inch away, and we're going to press them all out. So, so far, these are just like flying geese, except they need to be in opposite directions. You need four of each going opposite directions, which is a little easier to see after I cut them that you can tell that I sewed them opposite. Okay, so just like that, we've got four. Well, you'll need four. I'm doing two um, that are in opposite directions. I'm going to press them. If you guys are acorn pen users, one tip I'll give you is that when your pen starts leaking, which mine is doing today, you need to put a new tip on the end. So I need to put a new tip on mine. <laughs> you don't have to replace the whole pen. You can just get a new tip for it. Okay, got those ironed. Now I'm going to draw a line on the back of my background squares. What is the chemical in the pressing pen? It is a concentrated starch alternative, similar to like best press, but more concentrated. It's a proprietary formula, so they don't tell you exactly what's in it, but I call it magic juice because it's amazing. <laughs> it makes everything really, really flat. So I don't quilt without it anymore. <laughs> MJ said, I like those little corner triangles that form a square. It's an interesting way of delineating the blocks without doing sashing or regular corner squares. Might steal that idea. Go for it. <laughs> Andrea said, that was the question I had. When should I replace the tip on the pen? Yeah, they last a pretty long time because you guys know how much I use the pen. Um, and I've only changed the tip probably a couple of times in the last few years. Um, but when it starts leaking, like when I use it now and it's starting to drip on my mat, so I know it's time to change it. I probably wait too long, just like, you know, we all wait too long with rotary cutter blades and needles and everything. So, okay, let me find the two that are similar. Did I do this wrong? No, those two are good. good. Okay. All right, so we have two that are opposites now. And so now we're going to, we're going to do this just like flying geese, except we're going to see if you guys can see this. I'm not sure if the camera will adjust to let you guys see the line that I drew. So if we were doing flying geese, we would lay this on top and we would sew this direction. So that way we flip this over and make a flying and make a flying geese unit. But we're not doing that. We're going to turn it around and we're going to sew it in the same direction that we sewed the first seam on. So when we flip it, it's going to end up looking like that. So I hope that makes sense. So again, laying that two and a half inch block on there, sewing it the same direction as the seam that you already sewed. And after when we trim it away, it's going to look like that. 
And we're gonna do that for both sides. So this one is sewed the opposite direction. I'm gonna lay this one on here, sew it the same direction as this and flip it. And it's going to look like that. So we're kind of making like a stripe effect. Love that pink coral floral fabric. I do too, it's really pretty, cute. It reminds me of Sarah because it's kind of girly. <laughs> Um, I'm concerned about using the magic juice and a baby quilt since they chew on it. And is it safe? Well, if you wash the quilt, it, it washes out, number one. And number two, I believe it says, let me pull my bottle out, non-toxic. Um, but it washes out as soon as you wash the quilt. So if you wash it before you give it to a baby, it'll be fine. Yeah. But that's a good question, actually. When you think of acorn, just think of like starch, but it's not, it's like more like best press because it's non-starch. Hey, Donna, good to see you. Hi, Teresa Moore, good to see you too. Magic juice is <laughs> acorn precision piecing um, solution. It's this stuff, concentrated stuff right here, comes in this bottle that you put in this pen and you can lay it on, put it on your seams to make your seams nice and flat. It's amazing. So I call it magic juice because that's easier than acorn, easy press precision, precision piecing. <laughs> they should just rename it Magic Juice and give me credit. Oh, somebody's talking about shortbread cookies. Yum. That's one of my favorite cookies. Mm -hmm. Nancy said, my needle fell out of my sewing machine. Oh my goodness. It really lodged in there. So going to try my needle nose pliers to see if I can remove it. Be careful. Oh my goodness. Your needle fell out of your machine. It's amazing for paper piecing. Yes, it is. Just don't put it on the paper side. Put it on the fabric side. <laughs> oh, I don't think I saw Ingrid. Hi, Ingrid. Give you a lifetime supply. That would be amazing. They could rename it Magic Juice for like trading me the name for a lifetime supply. That would be awesome. <laughs> Even though I use it a lot, people ask me this all the time. Like you must go through a lot of it. I bought a gallon last January and I still have over half the gallon left. So even though like I do use it a lot because you don't need that much, it really, it hasn't evaporated. It hasn't. I still have a good amount, so yeah. I'm just trimming these a quarter inch away and then I'm gonna press them. And you're gonna make eight of these, four left and four right units. Okay. McDonald's made shortbread cookies in a little bag many years ago. They were delicious. I sort of remember those. They had, didn't they have like the shortbread and also like the little mini chocolate chip cookies? I kind of sort of remember that.
that's a good idea. Whoever said that, I saw it really quick. Where to go? About telling Nancy to try a magnet. Oh, Teresa. Teresa said that. Tra telling Nancy to try a magnet instead of pliers. That might be a good idea if you don't do anything to your machine. I would be scared to try pliers. I wouldn't want to do anything to my sewing machine. Um, Roxy, I think she's got some, I'm not positive, but, uh, let's see. Julie said, yes, the two kinds of cookies and they were both addictively great. Why they, why they took them off the menu is beyond me. I don't know. Why, why thing they do things that you never know. At some point, somebody said, we're not making money off of them. That's why <laughs> I'm, I'm going to guess. Okay. That was our press. All right, so now you'll see why you needed them opposite directions. Now that they're all sewn, I'm gonna actually turn these around so you guys can see them. We're gonna put these together just like this. And so you're gonna have something that looks like a chevron and that's gonna make our star points. So I'm just gonna go ahead and sew those together. And that's why you needed left, left and right units. I almost said that wrong. Left and right units. <laughs> The cookies McDonald's has now are really good. I haven't tried their cookies. I don't hardly ever at McDonald's anymore. Uh, my kids don't really like it. Every once in a while, I like their Coke. I'm a Coke girl and they have really good Coke. So every once in a while, I'll go through and just get a Coke. But <laughs> um, let's see. Stephanie, can you sell food in your Etsy shop? Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't think you'd want any of my food, <laughs> but yes, you can. You can sell anything you want in your Etsy shop. <laughs> Should we try to sell some McDonald's cookies? <laughs> That's funny. I first saw about the acorn pen on Laura Coy's channel and ordered from Stephanie when she had it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Um, it's a Canadian product and it's not been in this country for very long. I actually ordered it from Canada about six or seven years ago, and it was quite pricey to get it at that time. Um, it's a lot cheaper now because we can get it in the States. But once I got it, I kind of didn't care what the price was because it was so good. Now I'm just going to give these a press. And I'm pressing them open just because they're a little bit bulky, but if you don't like to press open, that's okay. You don't have to. Oh, I should sell cow tails. <laughs> that's funny. I think we got tired of cow tails for a bit because nobody talks about them anymore, but they are good. Just need a break from them. <laughs> Somebody should develop a quilter's emergency cookie ration pack. I like it. I think we should put like some sort of cookie in there and some sort of like chocolate bar. And if you've got one of those chairs from um, Arrow that has the little hidden, which is what I'm sitting on now, the little hidden um, feet thing where you can lift it up, you could hide it in there. And then you'll have a snack when you're, when you're wanting one, something sweet. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, 
My favorite Blizzard McFlurry was the Nestle Crunch one, but both TQ and McDonald's discontinued that flavor. Aw, that's too bad. Uh, let's see. Hey, Marge, how you doing? More beautiful blocks on your wall, thank you. Is that a glue stick I'm using? Nope, that is a starch alternative pen. It's a concentrated starch alternative that you put on your seams to make your blocks flat. Break for emergency only. <laughs> so yeah, brothers, call the hidden compartment a chocolate stash, said Julie. That's funny. That's really funny. You could, I would have to hide it in there to keep it from my kids, so. Um, isn't that what the drawer on the front of the machine is for, Candy? <laughs> yeah, I've seen pictures of people putting M&Ms in there. I think that's hilarious. The hidden catch drawers, chairs are the best. You can hide a lot of stuff in that space. Shelly said you could always put cookies in a, in a Danish shortbread tin. Your family would think it was sewing supplies. That's funny because my grandmother, she used to collect those tins to keep her sewing supplies in. She would keep thread in one and like buttons and notions like that in another. And she loved those. Okay, so I've got all those star legs done. So I'm gonna lay this block out. There's my center. And then I put my star legs around it. So somebody said this block looked hard from what it looked like. Does it look hard now that I showed you guys how to do it? I hope not, because it wasn't hard. It was easy. Okay, just like that. That's how our star is going to look. Yay. I'm getting a sugar craving, said Patty. Me too. You guys keep talking about all this sugar, and I want some chocolate. <laughs> and I don't have any. I'm trying to be good. I finally saw cocktail candy last year when I went to Oregon, had never seen it before. Ooh, they're good. For anybody who's not having a cocktail, you gotta try one once. If you don't like it, that's all right, but you gotta try it once, see if you do. I put objects I don't want to lose in there. I lost so many things, said <laughs> Patty. Cookie tins are expensive now. I keep losing mine to my family gatherings because my sisters never return them, said Julie. You should hunt them down. You could put one of those trackers on them. That's a great block, very pretty, thank you. So have any of you ever traveled, like airplane travel, and put one of those trackers in your suitcase? I'm just curious because um, with all the lost luggage lately, and I'm gonna be flying soon, I keep wondering if I should spend the money and get one for my suitcase. Because I was watching a documentary not too long ago that said, and I didn't realize this, that if they lose your suitcase, the airlines or the airport, you file a claim and they start looking for it. But after five days, they stop looking for it. And I was like, what? So like if you go to another airport and just sit there and nobody looks for it for five days and then they send it to like a place to auction off your suitcase. I, I don't know, five days doesn't seem like enough to me. So now I'm kind of wondering if I should get one of those tracker things. I tell folks if they give me back the tins, I'll fill them again. <laughs> yeah. That's a good idea.
so for the first time in so long, there is a huge yellow object in the sky, making it hard to see towards the west. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, this time of year can be really gray. Hey, Anne-Marie, how you doing? Just bought four this morning. For the trackers or for the cookie tins? <laughs> Uh, Cheryl said, I never check a bag with anything in it. I can't do without. I put important things in my carry-on. I agree with you there, but when I travel for like retreats, right, I can't take my rotary cutter and my big scissors on the plane. They won't let you. So I have to check a bag. And I do try to check like at least a change of clothes or two in my carry-on. Um, but some things you have to check. You can't take them on the plane. So I'm kind of stuck, um, you know, checking a bag. If I didn't have to, I would. I wish we'd go back to the days of pre-9-11 where we could bring some of that stuff on the plane. I mean, I get it. Rotary cutter could do some damage. <laughs> Not that I would do damage with it, but you guys know what I'm saying. Okay. Uh... Ingrid said, just got a couple for my brother. They are not much money. I think they are worth it for your peace of mind. That's what I was thinking, Ingrid. Um, just because they are like my sewing things that I have to pack. And if for some reason my bag doesn't come out, I can say, hey, here's where it's at. And they can go find it, you know? So, and Marisa trackers, yes. Okay. Lori said, I used one. Hubby gave it to me. I also put my name and address in my bags. Also, Hubby said it worked fine even going overseas. Awesome. Okay, that's good to know. You guys saying that they work. I'm going to try one, I think, this time. I only have to check one bag um, but this time around, but I think it's worth it because, I don't know. I've just heard horror stories lately of them losing a lot of luggage. So. I would rather drive two days than fly. Yeah, if I can drive somewhere, I will, but I'm going to Vegas in a couple weeks and um, that would be like almost a four day drive by myself. So, you know, cause I can't drive for too many hours by myself. Just get to press these rows in opposite directions. Build a little nest. Uh, let's see. Lori said, is there a location for the patterns you are using or can we purchase them? Are you talking about the stars that I'm working on? Because if you are, they are free on my blog, on my website. And the link to that is in that blue comment up at the top of the chat box. Carol said you could put the rotary cutter in without the blade and don't really use large scissors. That's true. I could buy, buy a blade when I get there. I, I think so, yeah, we'll probably have some blades <laughs> when I go to their retreat. That that could work. That would actually make me feel better because my rotary cutter is not cheap. Not that anybody's is, but you know, you guys know what I mean. I don't want to lose it, so. Uh, let's see. Diane said, but if it gets loaded on a plane going to a different airport, does it still work? Supposedly it does. So 
I'm going to try it out. I'll let you know. <laughs> Love these blocks and the colors are amazing. Thank you. They're really springy and happy and I'm loving them. Uh, Emery said, met Mona and she's the sweetest woman. Yes, she is. And so are you, Anne Marie. So I'm sure you guys hit it off. Oh, Donna, thank you. Thank you so much. You did not have to do that. I appreciate it. Thank you for the tip. Lori said, I've never been to Vegas. Um, always vacation overseas. I would love to go back overseas. It's been a while. Well, I am. I'm going overseas in June, but <laughs> I'm thinking like Europe or Australia or something like that. But down the road, going to Canada in June. Uh, let's see. Delmarie said, I really like this star. It would look wonderful in red, white, and blue. Yeah, I think so too. It kind of almost looked like a sparkler, wouldn't it? That'd be pretty. Oh, thanks, Shelly. She said, when I come to Washington, she can bring extra supplies if I don't want to check them in a bag. The other thought I had, Shelly, was maybe mailing something to one of you that lives out there and asking you to uh, bring it if you wouldn't mind mailing it ahead of time. Because that's the other thing they nail you on if your bag gets too heavy and some of the quilting supplies get really heavy. Okay. Those trackers work in packages you mail as well. I've heard of people using the trackers when mailing a quilt. Yep. I've heard of that too. Okay, now I'm just going to sew the rows together and we'll be done with this block. I love sewing and chatting with you guys. It makes it so much fun putting a block together. And just one tip, if you're making this block, I would sew, when you're sewing your rows together, I would sew with your square to square pointed up so you can see your seam, so you don't cut off the point. You can sew just below where the threads cross and your point will still be there. Uh, Mail gets lost too. It sure does. Yeah, I would probably UPS something out there, but um, I actually have a package I sent to a customer that's been lost since December 12th. And the post office just reimbursed me so I can get the lady some new fabric that she ordered. I felt so bad, but you can't do anything until the post office says, yeah, we think it's lost for good. So I haven't had too much bad luck with them, but every once in a while they break something or they lose a package, but it's very rare, but it can happen. Uh, Matthew said, sure. Feel free to mail stuff. Thank you guys, you're awesome. Teresa said, if you want to mail anything to me, I'm driving to Vegas. Aw, you guys are so awesome, thank you. I should be okay for Vegas just because um, I'm not hosting the retreat so I don't have to take as much stuff, um, but it's definitely harder when I'm hosting and I need to bring all kinds of things, so. Uh, Tracy said, you will be flying over me when you travel to Halifax. Wave to me. I will. I'm really excited to go. So what I'm talking about, if you guys don't know, is that I'm going to the Quilt Canada, which is the Canadian National Quilt Show in Halifax in June. So I'm really excited about that. 
and I get to meet um, in person. I'm meeting up with Laura Lynn from Mom and Pop Quilt Shop, so that'll be fun. And Stephen and Walter are going to be there. So if you're a Canadian and you want to come by, you should. Going to be lots of us there. Um. Oh, thanks, Shelly. Y'all are so sweet. I love my Washington ladies. I love y'all, not just Washington ladies, but. <laughs> Anne Marie said, my last cotton cut took a five day vacation in St. Louis. St. Louis seems to be a problem. The package that I was talking about that got lost since December, it has said it's been in St. Louis since December 18th and it hasn't moved and they can't find it. My cotton cuts are both sitting in St. Louis. So I'm a little nervous, but hopefully they'll be here. If they don't get here, I'll have the live anyway. And those of you who got your clues can sew it, but Fingers crossed. I'm not sure what's going on over there at their regional mail center in St. Louis, but. Uh, Sherry Harris said, are you changing planes? I'll see you in Vegas. My flight is nonstop, so I'm hoping my suitcase will follow me. You're probably more likely to get your suitcase if you're nonstop, but unfortunately there's no direct flights from here to Vegas. If there were, I would be on it. <laughs> Um, I have to change planes in Chicago. So there used to be before all the virus happened, um, there was direct flights from here to Vegas. There's not anymore. Everything goes through Chicago um, or other places, but mainly Chicago to go to Vegas. So that's okay because it breaks it up a little bit because the direct flight is about five hours and Chicago is only an hour, but one last hour stuck in a tube with somebody. I'm good with that. <laughs> uh, Patty said, I have an Amazon order that's been circling Little Rock for four days. Oh, no. Evansville, Indiana is the same way. Do you have plans for a new box yet? Yes. And I was hoping to have it all done and ready for today. But if you guys don't know, the cotton industry got hit in the last couple of years with all the weird weather and stuff. So um, thread is going to become something that's hard to get a hold of. And I'm trying to get a hold of enough thread, even though it might be different colors for different people, for the box. So as soon as I can get my hands on enough thread, then I will release the box for you guys, the next project box. So, all right. So there's that block. And Celie said, could you show the other block up close? Sure. Let me grab that one. You did a wonderful job on that star. Thank you. Love the block you just made. Thank you, Susie. So that's again called a Wyoming star block or an antique star, they also call it, which is kind of appropriate. It does look sort of antique to me. So here's the other one up close. So I used um, this red had the green and the blue in it. So I just kind of pulled those colors and used it for the star, so. Shelly said, I'm a guest, I'm a thread hoarder. I am too, but that's because I'm a long arm quilter. So I have a lot of thread. I won't run out anytime soon, but getting thread now, it's tough. It's tough. So hopefully I will be able to tell you guys good news next week that the box is ready. So I'm trying to go to different places and source enough thread to fill all the boxes. So yeah, thank you for asking though, you guys. I really appreciate that. Okay. I'm sad though that Walla catalog stopped offering Orofil. Orofil is really hard to get a hold of. And that's what I put in my boxes. You guys know that I love Orofil. And actually, threads getting from all the companies is hard to get a hold of, but Orofil in particular is really hard to get a hold of right now. So that doesn't surprise me. All right. So there we are with this week's stars, the Wyoming stars. I love them. Actually, it would be fun to make a whole quilt out of just these Wyoming stars. I think they're really, really pretty. So, and they're unique. Um, it's not something that's not out there, but you don't see them very often. So I think it's really cool. Uh, Christine said, love the star blocks. Cheryl said, love the blocks. Wait, wait to finish mine. I think she maybe meant can't wait to finish mine. How many of each block? Um, okay, so we're making two of each block. So as you can see, I've got two of the Ohio star and two of each one going down here behind me. Um, so there's going to be 10 blocks all together. And 
or 10 different blocks, but 20 blocks all together because you're making two of each one. If you want to, you could make each star out of the same fabric. I just am doing each one out of different fabric just to make it mix it up a little bit. Um, I had these bright, fun fabrics. So I was like, let's make a fun springy quilt. <laughs> so um, yeah, so 20 of those. And then if you guys want any more information on the quilt and what size it's going to finish and all that, I put that in my blog this week because several of you had asked me how many blocks there were, all that kind of thing, how big the quilt was going to end up being. Um, and also the quilt may change size depending on how you decide to finish your quilt. I will give you guys um, a setting at the end of how I'm going to finish it. So the size that's in the blog is what it's going to be the way I'm going to set mine. Now you could choose not to do that. Um, I am going to put two borders on this, a small inner skinnier border and then a larger outer border. Um, and that's what's going to make it the size that I put on the blog. So if you decide not to do that, it's going to be smaller or you could always make it bigger too by either making more stars or adding more borders or things like that. So um, this is your quilt. You finish it the way you want it. Um, but I'm going to definitely share the setting that I'm going to do with you. And if you want to finish it my way, that's awesome. Um, if you are making these stars, don't forget if you don't mind sending me some pictures at my email or you can just you can find go through my website and go hit the contact and I'll reply to you and you can send me an email with your pictures. Um, I would love to feature those in my next UFO blog. I do have a few from a few people that have sent them in. I'm not putting names when I put them in my blog just because um, I know there's a few people who don't want their name published. So I'm just gonna put them in there and let you guys look at them without names. But thank you so much for those of you who have sent them in because I love seeing them. Because I think, well, it's like when everybody's doing their own fabric, I think it looks really cool because they look a little bit different based on what fabric you pick. So yeah, that's a fun block and I like how it uses three different colors. Yes. Please like the live everyone. Oh, thank you so much. Loving the stars. Are all of your subscription boxes sold out? I haven't put my spring for this year up yet. I have one autumn box I think left yay and a few of last year's summer box left um but pretty much other than that yeah until the next one goes up so um I will let you guys know when that's going to happen I usually send out a newsletter um, um for my email list and I also will tell you on a live or in a video that I'm going to put my box up so you'll have plenty of notice hoping I'll have it up by next Saturday fingers crossed I can get enough thread um and if i do then you know i'll put it up on my my etsy shop and you can guys can go ahead and get it so it's very springy fabric that's all i'm going to give you a hint at somebody told me can you give us a hint at the fabric no 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 you guys know i don't do that <laughs> okay all right guys well thank you so much for coming and talking to me it made it so much fun to make this block i love it and i can't wait to see all of yours I will see you again really soon. If you're sewing the Fort Worth Fabric Studio uh, Valentine quilt along with me, the last day is Monday. That quilt like went by in a flash. I can't even believe that we're almost done. So I'll see you on Monday for that. And I'll have a UFO video up later this week. Plus, um, this will probably be the last week that we sew the Stargazer quilt, Stephen and I. And at some future date, we'll arrange to take everybody's finished quilts and show them. Um, but that's almost done too. So lots of things wrapping up. And then next Saturday, don't forget the puzzle mystery quilt. So along village green, I'm so excited to sew with everybody. I can't wait to see you all on zoom. It's really, really fun for me to connect faces to names. So I love doing that. And I am looking forward to sewing that. Plus we get to see everybody's colorway, which will be great. All right, guys, have a great week and take care. Love y'all. Bye.